All right, welcome to the flip side of things. Now built a bit of a space station, may have gotten a little bit carried away with it. I'm kidding, I actually built this a while back when I was originally testing them on. But anyway, so I've got we've got these oxygen vents here, or this one oxygen vent rather, and the CO2 scrubbers on either side. I prefer to use the CO2 scrubbers because then if you've got two CO2 scrubbers here, you do not require oxygen as a gas or liquid being pumped to the oxygen vent. You can kind of see this here. It says empty. This is normally where you'd put oxygen if you didn't have two CO2 scrubbers. If you have one CO2 scrubber, it reduces the oxygen consumption by half. So we'll still use a little bit of oxygen, but not nearly as much as if you didn't have any CO2 scrubbers at all. Um, CO2 scrubbers require carbon collection cartridges in them. They deteriorate over time. They take a really long time to deteriorate. Um, the other problem, the other thing that's not good about the CO2 scrubbers is it does make the oxygen vent require more power. It's got a kind of weird setup here. Let's kind of see, it got the uh, coal generator here. I've actually got a set of solar arrays up on top too, which I'll show you in a second. But basically, the basically the way the auction works is you basically seal off an area, and as long as it's not open to the vacuum of space, you are fine for the most part. So just don't like break any walls or anything. Um, I tend to find the best thing to do is if you want to like get in and out of your base or space or wherever without you know getting without uh, letting the oxygen out in the space, you can build a small airlock like what I've done here. You push this, you can open this, and walk inside. There's no oxygen in here because now you know, that's sealed. Now I can walk out into uh Oops, I don't want to die. And so now I can walk out into vacuum of space without disrupting the oxygen inside the rest of the station. So, I, real quickly, I do have these solar generators here that collect one RF a tick, one left in sunlight, because this station is in orbit and is it's always facing the sun. It's always collecting energy up here. There is that. Oh, I do have these uh, decorative station lights here as well. It might be nice to have if you don't want like kind of glowstone. I mean, kind of fits the feel of a space station, I think. So that's essentially how the auction system works. There's not really all that much to it. Um, oh, one other thing is, depending on the configuration, the advanced rocketry does have several modes of config for the auction system. I have, uh, if I bring up configuration on the screen here, if you look under atmospheric collection method, there's several different ways you can have it set up. There's no threading radius based, which basically, as long as there's no area in your room that's more than 40 blocks away before it hits a wall or whatever, so basically, the largest largest area can still be 40 blocks by 40 blocks with the oxygen vent in the center. If you do radius space with threading, that's more of a technical thing, but it actually spawns off a separate thread and does it, and actually performs the operation on there, so you don't take up... So it may help, like, the main thread on your server run faster. However, that is experimental, and there may be some weird bugginess that may occur with that. There's also a volume-based calculation method, where it actually checks how many blocks of air are in your space station and only gives up if that's too big. Which is really good if you want to build, you know, long, windy space stations with, like, narrow hallways or whatever. But I believe I believe it's still the equivalent of 40 by 40 by 40, or 40 times 40 times 40. Uh, the problem with volume-based, though, is because it may, takes a may take longer before the uh, oxygen system realizes that it's actually in space and that your area is not sealed. It may have a negative impact on server performance, especially if checks are being performed often where you have someone like flipping a lever or whatever, or someone constantly breaking and unbreaking blocks on a sealed area. It shouldn't, it shouldn't have a huge impact if it's only done once in a while. You may notice a spike here and there when someone changes something. But the, uh, the auction system does not do an up, does not check to see if something is sealed unless a block is changed. This helps reduce the amount of 
uh, calculations that need to be done, and so you don't have so you don't have a delay between when you break a block and when it's like oh we're suddenly in a vacuum. Uh, there's also threading base. There's also the same option threading volume base, like there's with radius runs faster. You won't have the lag spikes like you would with non-threading. However, it is experimental, and you may run into weird things with it. So that's that's the option. That's the option system in a nutshell. Another another thing that was recently added, I believe, is either 106 or 1.0.7, is the ability to have is the ability to connect rooms together. So if you have it, especially if you're using a radius base, you may want to have multiple rooms like this. Somewhere around here is 40 blocks from the oxygen vent. Um, complaint I had had in the past was that if you open the door, your entire station loses oxygen. So I want to try to avoid doing that. Right now, as you can see, the, uh, the lever is up, so the vent is not on, so I will take damage if I were in survival. So I'm going to turn this on. Survival. So, quick demo. If I, if I leave this door open and don't have this on, I'll take damage. Even if, even if the door's open. And, uh, even if I'm on this side of the door, if I have it open, I'll still take damage because that one vent cannot fill the entire station. So what I can do is I can turn this vent on. This will seal this area up. And if I open this door, I won't take, I won't take damage, in the, in the whole station. Oops. This thing's hard to get through because I have the stairs there. So I can do that without, you know, taking a ton of damage now. So, yeah, that, that's the options in the nutshell. Uh, next big thing for space stations is, you know, you'd be like, well, I want to go to a planet other than the moon or Earth, right? Well, you can turn space stations into warp ships by just placing down a, uh, by building a warp core, which I've got here. It basically acts as like a method of injecting fuel into the, uh, warp ship, and actually, the idea is a warp core actually performs the operation, but in reality, with the way the mod is coded, it only is actually a uh, fuel injector for the most part. But you do need to have one of these. Um, dilithium crystals are the fuel. Uh, for those of you who've watched Star Trek, it may seem familiar, as well as maybe uh, certain other devices. But anyway, I digress. So in order to use, in order to, in order to go to other planets, you need to put dilithium in here. I've already filled up the capacity. Um, it will, it will take the dilithium as soon as you put them in here. The reason it's not doing that now is it's already filled up the capacity of the warp ship itself. Um, the other thing you need in order to go to, uh, go to other planets is this warp controller here, which if you right click will actually let you select the diff different planets. So right now I'm orbiting Earth, my destination is Earth. So if I click select planet by default, it gives me an overview of the solar system. So for many of these I can pick planets. If I want to go to a different solar system, I can actually click the up button. And by default there's four other stars, I believe, but in this particular I have a I have a custom setup where it just has one star and one planet. So I can go to this other planet. By clicking on the planet Magna Volpes, or Magna Volpes, click select, and you'll notice that orbiting Earth, destination Magna Volpes. Fuel cost is rather high, this is because I'm warping between, between stars, so there is a large distance. So if I click warp, it will, it will take me to that planet. So I click warp, you see the outside has turned dark, the Earth has disappeared, and there's a nice little star field effect out there. After a couple of seconds of traveling, the uh, planet will reappear. Um, and now, and it looks the same as Earth, because it's, it's got similar properties to Earth, Magna Volpes, Habitable Planet. Uh, let's see. It's, it's about, about in the Goldilocks zone, a little bit massive than, more massive than Earth, and a little bit higher pressure. But, it still kind of looks like Earth. Uh, so if I want to go back, Click up, find soul, double click it. Um, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna go to a gas giant. So I can select the gas giant. Again, 500 fuel units, cause I'm going 
between stars. I click warp, get the star field effect again. If I open this, it will say orbiting space, destination, question, question, question. Being in warp kind of scrambles the computer is the way I like to, the way I like to put it. So now you can see orbiting, orbiting the gas giant out there now. So that, so that's how you get to other planets. And then, you know, if you want to descend to other planets or whatever, you can, you can uh, take whatever rocket you came on, make sure you put your station ship into it, and then just take off. It should take you to that planet. Uh, you cannot go to gas giants, however. There's no surface, so there's no point going there. We go to Sol 5. Also, notice a slightly less fuel cost. It's not 500, it's still a bit expensive. And I have to go all the way across from here down to here. So I'm going to warp there. And, uh, let's see, I'm going to go find the rocket I have parked upstairs somewhere. Computer, computer did not like something I did. Alright, so here's a rocket. Uh, it's not fuel at the moment. Guidance computer. Station 1. X, it says X-N-A-Z-N-A. Mostly because I've never actually gone down to this planet before. So by default it'll take me to the coordinates, you know, the space station on that planet. Which would be somewhere around negative uh, 1,500 by negative 1,500, because that's what this happens to be. So if I want to do that planet, I just take off and that rocket would take me to that planet just like he'd, I'd gone to Earth and the moon. Now there are three other blocks I have here I have not explained yet. I've got the gravity controller, I've got the orientation controller, and I've got the altitude controller. The orientation controller basically determines how fast the space station is spinning. So I'm only going to turn it up to like really slow, you know, point or negative one. And see how everything's kind of spinning really slowly. And make it go faster. Go all the way up to uh, one rotation per second, I believe. Somewhere around there. So if you look outside, you can see it's starting to speed up a bit. Try not to get too dizzy. I prefer to keep it fairly slow, if rotating at all. Uh, another thing here is we've got the uh, gravity controller. Changes how much gravity, or the force of gravity on the space station. Uh, neither, none of these blocks here require power, and neither does the warp core. Uh, so you can see artificial gravity is decreasing. See, so you can already, already jump a little bit higher than I could before. And, uh, items kind of fall a little bit slower and bounce a little bit. And we'll keep going down until it reaches the target I set, which is like 11, which is moonlight gravity. I actually can't go much lower than that because the, uh, of the way that Minecraft handles movement updates. If I, if I go too low, it just assumes that the entity is no longer moving. You can no longer go down. So you just kind of get like stuck in midair. Which is why you can only go down to 11. Or 11 percent. Um, the altitude controller change, it will change how far away you are from space station. Or I'm sorry, from the planet. So if, uh, I change it up to be really high up. I'll, I'll eventually, I'll start getting farther and farther from the uh, planet I'm in orbit around. And then, you know, we'll get kind of, we'll kind of start getting smaller. If you look really carefully, you can kind of see it edging along there. It does, it does take a long time because the idea is you are going a, a fairly far distance out from the uh, planet for it to be able to look that much smaller. And uh I believe that covers I believe that covers um pretty much everything you need to know to play the mod. Um I do have a I do have a uh, secret something hidden on the moon for anyone familiar with the Apollo uh, eleven missions. Uh, you may may be able to find something involving the Apollo there. I believe I actually have that as one of the achievements. Somewhere in here, one sm one small step, I believe it is. So uh, I'm not going to explain all the planets in detail. I do have 
a website with uh, more information about individual blocks and stuff linked on the uh, curse page for the mod. And uh, a bit more information on configuring and stuff on that website too, so, you know, more in-depth documentation on the commands and the uh, different configurations you can set up if you're running a server. So, uh, you know, I hope you have fun playing the mod if you're interested and you know, if you just kind of want to see what this was, I hope this looked interesting to you. Maybe you can give it a try. But, um, you know, explore, have some fun, you know, build some cool bases. You know, if you really want to share, feel feel free to post builds on the uh, Curse Forge page for the mod or whatever. I, I really like seeing what people build. I think it's kind of awesome. I've also come to the conclusion that most everyone builds better than I do. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, have fun. And, um, I'll have a good time. And this is Z Master out. <laughs>